wish you didn't get the gold. They were killing people over there. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, they wouldn't let me die. <laughs> well, I was over there in 1975, with it, and we were dodging bullets and bombs and everything else back at that period of time. And uh, uh, the desert is blooming. The Arabs have a total different mindset, and this is the problem we have in the world. Uh, the way Allah, or not in Allah, but the way Mohammed did things was what was happening back in what? 5 and 600 A.D. Well, they were all, even at that time, and even still over there, they're extremely backward people. You go out there and uh, some of the worst it, it is so unbelievable the backwardness and the filth those nations. Mm -hmm. It is, you've been there. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, well, I went into a, in, I'll never forget Damascus, Syria. I went into Lebanon, they tried to shoot me in pieces. But <laughs> in Damascus, Syria, I went in a, a, a hotel there that was supposed to be a real high class hotel. I went into my bedroom and I hit the bed like this and the dust just flew. This was clean then. You know, it was made. The floor, you could not see the tile. It had a beautiful set tile in there, but they didn't even know how to fix the faucets. They had taken over where some Europeans or whatever had built this hotel originally, and the faucets underneath were so bad that you couldn't turn the faucets on or off above. You had to go down underneath the sink to turn the faucet on, and the hot water ran all the time. And the shower, all it was, was a garden hose sprayer on top of a pipe that came up and there was no shower curtain. <laughs> and it was just total filth. And uh, when you went into the restaurant, uh, it was <clears throat> like you had gone back 2,000 years <laughs> in the field. They were cooking all their food with a, a stove that over here they had five or ten gallons of diesel and they turned it on dripping down there and, and the fire burned and ran down on the rock and, and flames were coming up and, and that was their stove. And everything tasted like diesel. It just, everything was like diesel. Uh, and the salt was in a bowl on the table and the sugar was in a bowl. And both of them had clods of dirt in them. Oh. It was this was 1975. This was like you come out of the, the dark ages. But it is their religion that keep, kept them there and kept them from progressing in any way. You know, God's Word straightens out the scientific world. And if people hadn't gone astray in the dark ages, they wouldn't have started believing that the earth was flat and gone back to the Babylonian idea of creation and all of that. We wouldn't have had all of that. False religion really leads all of humanity astray. In Israel today, Israel, uh, first of all, they went in there and they, and they fought and won the land that they have and whipped the, the Arab nations back. That land never produced for them. You know why? Because they didn't do anything with it to make it produce. As simple as that. They didn't care about going out there. When I went over there in 1975, we saw tractors rusting in fields. And plows and discs and everything, cedars and everything was just sitting there, rusting. They wanted us out of that country. They didn't want us there. I knew there was going to be a problem in 1975. Because when you went into these countries, they were mad at us because we had changed their lifestyle. We don't, they don't mind us selling them wheat for their oil or whatever, but they are not, they don't want to grow a crop like we do. They want to do it, do it just like Mohammed did with a stick and a mm -hmm. pulling with the donkey. It's you, uh, you use the word Jim false religion, uh, I just say Satan. Yeah. I mean who is behind false religion. Yeah. When, when I when I taught the, the lesson on parables, and if any of you wants that, I've got it on C D and and cassette and video, all that stuff. And on C D it's video and, and audio. But I taught, the Lord said that as he talked about the different parables, he talked about the parable of the wheat and the tares. 
He sold the wheat. Satan sold the tares. False religion would always, always coexist with truth, and he would try to overcome it. Well, over there in those countries, the reason why none of that land ever produced for them is because they were willfully ignorant. God turned to the book Genesis, the first chapter, because this is really good. This is we're, we're using, we're studying the, the history of the Old Testament, aren't we? One of the things is for is history, and uh, uh, Genesis, the first chapter. And verse 26, have you, anyone got that? Lee, you got that? 1 26, Genesis 1 26. Will we make him in our image? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Genesis yeah, 1 20. You probably got quoted. <laughs> you don't need to turn there. <laughs> Genesis 1 26. And everybody turn there because I'm going to ask each one of you to do something here. Genesis 1 verse 26. Got that, Lee? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Read that for me. Then God said, let us make man in our image. All right. Whose image? Our. 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 Who's our? God. All right. God. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In our triune image. All right. Go ahead. According to our likeness. Let us have dominion, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. All right, let's go back and analyze some of this thing, some of these commands and some of this. This is a dogmatic statement, isn't it? What do we mean by a dogmatic statement? Dogma is what? It's not black and white. It's, 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 it's black, black and white statement. Really. It is black and white. It's an absolute statement of fact. It's coming from the knowledge and revelation of God and mankind. It tells us something straight out. Or a dogmatic statement. This is straight out. All right. It's just telling us this is the way it was. All okay. right. God. Now Elohim here. He said, "Let us make man in our image." It says in the original language, "Let him make it, let, let us make man in our blood flowing likeness." and our shadow casting image and our spiritual likeness. Physical, mental, and spiritual. Alright? And then it says, let them rule over the fish of the sea. And let's go back just a little bit. This is something that we have a lot of trouble with today because Calvinism, hyper-Calvinism is becoming so popular in the day that we live. Not only did God, he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. In our, in our likeness. What is one of the greatest rights of God? We use that term. Sovereignty. God is sovereign. Then. What does that word mean? He may do as he chooses. He does what he wants he to do. He doesn't answer to anybody. Because he has a right to do it. Okay? Now, when God created anything in this world, all the cosmos, okay, He created it to bring about what? According to the book of Revelation. Glory. For His glory. It would show forth His glory. Without a Bible, the Word of God preaches a Creator. You study any animal, you study anything on this earth, and it's going to teach you about a Creator. The Creator, God. Like I've said many times, I handed somebody a watch and said, "Who, what, who made that watch?" And they said, "Well, so and so made it." Well, that company does exist or did exist, all right? Because we have a creation, we it absolutely sustains a Creator, doesn't it? We must have a Creator when you have a creation. God made man in his physical, spiritual likeness, but also in his sovereign likeness. In other words, he hasn't had a volition. He would or would not serve God. 
That is one of the most dangerous things that God ever gave mankind. Who else did he give this right to? Oh, well, he gave it to Adam. But who else? Satan. Satan, Lucifer, all the angelic forces and, and spirits at that time. Are there good spirits of God? Are there demon spirits? All right. We know, it, are there what we call non-fallen angels? Are there fallen angels? What makes the difference between them and them? Volition. <laughs> Volition. Sin. They chose not to. I don't understand everything I know about all that. Just as simple as that. But that is one of the rights that he has given all of his creation. Even the Bible says that even the creation itself cries for the redemption of God, doesn't it? The very creation itself. Now let's look at this closely. According to our likeness, and let them, what well, it's the, the use of the word rule. Well, who, who is a ruler? Who is ruler? What is he called? A ruler. Master. Huh? Master. Master, what is a master? Like? What is it? Head over the house. Head. Okay, an administrator. What else is he called in medieval times? King. King. Possibly. <laughs> a king. He is the king. Let him be the king of the earth. The administrator of my kingdom. Right back here in, in, in the age of innocence. When God created man, did he put in him the... A volition. Now he could have always done right. But, how about angels? Could he have made them to where they could only go one way or the other? No, but then they wouldn't have been, they couldn't have shown forth love. That's right. Now man could have gone one way or the other. But without the right, the sovereignty, to be one or the other, there could have been never, he could have never shown God love. Could he? This is one of the things that's troubled mankind from now on. This is a theolo theological thing that has been discussed and tossed back and forward for 2,000 years. Okay? In our image, let him uh, be a king over the what? The fish cosmos. The fish in the sea. That's right, the cosmos. The whole cosmos. And he, he, he absolutely puts it line upon line here exactly what he's supposed to do. Let him be a king over the fish in the sea and over the wobblies. Over the... Uh, all the wing flappers is what it means. Alright? Everything that flies in the sky. Alright? And over the cattle, what is a cow? Cattle of the earth. And this, what is this word for cattle? Everything that grazes from shore to shore. Here to where anything. That's right. Matter of fact, how much, how many things grazed at this time? Everything. Everything grazed. Even the lions grazed. Okay. So let it be. Huh? All of the animals. All the whole animal kingdom. And, uh, and over all the earth. And every moving thing that moves upon the earth. Every moving thing. In Indian, that word is skan, taku, skan, skan. It also means the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives life to everything. Hmm? It means life, being. That Hebrew word is haki. The existing, ever existing thing. Alright? The ever existing. is He is called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Alright? Everything.
every living thing, everything that God give life. Genesis 1 and verse 26. That moves upon the earth. Alright, now, this was quite a job right here. In the beginning, now we, we're studying about the book of Isaiah, real Bill, we're still studying about what's ticking over there in Isaiah, alright? And verse uh, 27 says, Somebody read 27 for me. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. All right, now verse 28. Somebody else read number 28 there. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. All right. And uh, let's go on and read a little bit more. Verse uh, 29 there. Brother Norm, you got that one? And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree uh, in, which, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me. All right, verse 30, someone read, Brother oh, Lee, you got that one? Also, to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God said everything, and God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. By the way, in Hebrew, there is no was there. Okay, and, and the sky and everything that moves upon the earth, which has life, and I give you every green plant for food, and it became so. It not was so, but it became a change from one state to another. And very good, and there became evening, and there became morning, the sixth day. All right. Well, what else did God? Uh, what else did God do here in the garden? What did God tell uh, man to do? What to tell rule? Man? Huh? To rule. Is there work in ruling? He had named all the animals. Uh, he had the name all. He named all the animals, didn't he? What else did he do? What else? What did he do to the garden? Huh? What does that take? What? What? What are we talking about here? Caretaker. Caretaker. An administrator. But he was a... That dirty word. That, huh? that dirty <laughs> word that the world looks upon today. That dirty Same word, it starts with a W. Work. Work. <laughs> Before man ever sinned, God gave him work to do. Work. Work is... A very important thing. There was an old saying for, for many, many years, idleness is the devil's workshop. In other words, stay busy. Stay busy. What was Adam supposed to do to the garden? Guard it. And tend it. Alright? But there weren't any weeds at that time. No, there weren't any weeds. But he was to guard it and tend it. Guarded and tended from someone. From something. What was that something? Satan. 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 Now, where did sin begin? How long ago did sin begin? Eons and eons. Eons and eons. All your little charts up here, where was that? In eternity past, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28 tells you where sin began. Was there death back then? in that world and in that time. There must not have been death. Was there death? Yeah. There was death. As we look in the fossil uh, forms of the earth and, and, and we look and see what happened when Satan rebelled against God, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, there was death. There, was, there were animals on this earth when God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning in Genesis 1 and 1. 
By the way, Genesis 101 says, in beginnings, plural, created Elohim, the heavens, Hashemayim, the arts, the heavens and the earth. And she became formless and void. And darkness became over the face of the earth. And remember, we studied here a while back about what we call the gap theory. You know, and I call it the gap fact. Where did the gap, the, the non-gap theory come from? Where did that originate in hidden originate in history? The non-gap? Uh -huh. The idea that God created everything from He created chaos and then He set it in order. Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, the Babylonian idea of creation. Where did that come from? Satan. Satan. All right. That's that. And we, and if you study history, you can even study. And of course, where when the King James Bible was written, what did the Church of England believe? Chaos. The chaos. The Babylonian theory of creativity. All right. That's why they translated it in such a way. That's why it has led people astray for so many, many years. And people that stood up in, in, in the beginning, who were some of the people that stood up and said, whoa, this isn't right? Remember Brother, Brother Lee? Remember some of them down through history? You mean like Martin Luther? Oh, okay. Or Zwingli? No. no. Zwingli? No. Or who are you? Um, in, in, in time, who were some of the people? John Baptist? George N. H. Peters. Oh. He was a Lutheran writer. The, uh, uh, okay. the Theocratic Kingdom, I think, is what he wrote. He talks about this. Uh, G. H. Pember, Bullinger, and they started. They bring and they and guess what else that they wrote? Pember, especially. He wrote and he and he compiled all of the stories of the Babylonian idea of creation and put it together. I, one time I'll over. At Anna was at a Bible study and I went and, and they asked me about this. Uh, they were studying the Bible in eight ages. And uh, by one of my teachers that had written that, fellow students. Uh, and I took a stack of books over there that told all about this difference between creation out of chaos and a perfect creation. When God created the heavens and the earth, it was perfect. It was finished. Only perfect stuff comes from the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Alright? And something happened to it. It became formless and void. And God, in eternity past, decided to use mankind as a tool, a glorifying tool, to bring forth, bring the whole universe back into His control and glory. <coughs> And how would he do that? He created, we're in Genesis first chapter, Brother Greg. How would he do that? He created a man with a volition. He created a man like himself. In his shadow casting, blood flowing, and spiritual likeness. Alright? And he told him to do what? Work. Work. <laughs> You know, the idea of man today is they don't want to work anymore. Work is a dirty word. People don't want to do any labor. Now, originally, Adam's labor was more a guarding than anything else, wasn't it? Back here in, in, in eternity past, there was sin and there was death. And what was he to guard this earth from? Intruders. How long did he perform that duty? We don't know. Do you sure. have any idea? You've got days, months, years later? Sure, period. But well, we don't know. It could, no, have, been, we don't it could know. have been as much as a year. It could have been ten years. It could have been a week. It could have been a hundred years. For him to learn everything. Oh, it's such a good head for him. How long did it take him to... I mean, he was in harmony with God for quite a while. How long would it take you to name every animal on the face of the earth? I believe he named every... Uh, little biotic structure, the heavens and the earth and all. I don't know how long that was, but and he was guarding the earth for a while. But he wasn't happy, was he? Mankind wasn't happy. One. He was alone. He was alone. He wasn't alone, was he? 
How do you get along? <laughs> <laughs> How many of you ever been alone and not alone? Huh? All right. He did not have, God said, a healthier, helper worthy of him. So what did God do? Oh, I made a woman. That's right. What does woman mean? Out of man. All right. Out of man. So everything that's woman is out of man, isn't she? All right. And let's go from the Hebrew now and just look at that just a minute. And it says over here that uh, in verse 21 that the Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, caused deep sleep to fall upon the man. And he slept and he took... Uh, it took literally of his sides. Plural. Sides. How many sides do you have? Some people have a lot of sides. Four. <laughs> All right. You've got four sides on the top and the bottom, don't yeah, you? Right. All right. You are a complete, actually, completely four-dimensional in, in a way, person. And he took from all those dimensions from mankind, wasn't a rib. That's sides. That's sides, plural. And he formed from those sides Isha. The name for man in Hebrew is Ish. Woman is Isha, which literally means out of man, and that's where it came from English. Ish, man, Isha, woman. So he took everything out of mankind that was feminine, one of my teachers said, and made woman. And he took, he separated this being, they separated them and made them two, and then he put them back together in marriage and made them one again. And that's a spiritual, tremendous understanding that we need to understand today. How close a man and a woman are. And the man was complete then. He wasn't complete before. God divided him. And then he became complete. He. And up here above that, that the Lord God commanded man, saying, From every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat from it. For the day that you eat from it, dying you shall die. Alright, dying you shall die. And he also told man that uh, he was to guard this garden. Guard this garden. Now, who is man? Who was he? He's Abal. The Bible says also, and this is something that you, you have to get from Hebrew only, that God formed man from what? As the dust. As the dust of the ground, not from it. He didn't come from dirt. He, he came from the same elements that the dirt came from, which came from God. The same atomic structure that the dirt came from, he created mankind. And mankind was to become dirt when he died. Not only was he to become dirt, but he was supposed to live off of everything that came from that dirt. And mankind was integrated, in, in absolutely in great detail related to this earth, wasn't he? And he was to be the caretaker and the guard of this earth. And that was a job and it was a work. The world today, I mean... The idea of America today is, is uh, work real fast, not with your hands, but with your gourd, your head, you know. You don't want to do any physical work, that's terrible. But work real fast until you get 30 years old, retire, and then just sit back and drink pina coladas and <laughs> sail on the seashore or, or go on these long trips and climb the Himalayas or whatever, you know. That's the idea of mankind. Work was a privilege. Do you know that? Work was a privilege. It was. Privilege. It is a gift. A gift. 
I mean, we don't think about it like that. And I've told people for the last 30 years, I said, when, young people, when you grow up, find a job that you like. Find a job that you like and one that you can serve God in. Find a job like that and just give it your all. If you want to be a carpenter, be the best carpenter that, that you can be. Because you need to be proud of whatever you do. Because that's part of the basic fulfillment of life. Now Adam had a job to do. He was a king. Now we think of people as kings sit back and just grab a big old uh, ham and start chewing on it. You know, we think about this Henry VIII type king. Go like that and wipe and just grab another one. That's all they ever did. But with king, real kings, a real king will think of his subjects. Now, <clears throat> he's supposed to rule over the earth. Whose earth is it? God's. God's earth. Did he have a right to go out there and start thrashing everything and changing it? Was he going to go out there and clear cut the garden and start building trees with it or whatever? You know? would, they, that would, would that have been wrong? What was he supposed to do? To guard it from intruders and to keep it beautiful like God had made it. Now, you can go too far the other direction by a long shot. We got people, what we call hyper-environmentalists today. They don't want you touching anything. How have you ever heard of Caligula? Nero, Julius, August, um, or, or uh, Augustus, <laughs> not Augustine. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Augustus. Who were they? Huh? Emperors. What? Who were the emperors of? Huh? The Roman Empire. What did they have in common? They had one problem in common. All of them had one problem in common. Christians. Huh? Christians. I'm glad we have Christians. No, 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 they had problems with Christians, you know. Wickedness and greed. Wickedness and greed. But what else? What other kind of problem? What about the medicine of the day? What about the Greek philosophy? What We have the... the, the uh, huh? <laughs> You're a drunkard. You're a drunkard. You're a drunkard, all right. <laughs> How about the Greek idea of medicine and the Roman idea of medicine? It plagued the world for many years because it was a false idea. It was built upon a false premise. What happened to George Washington in the United States of America? They leached him and bled him to death because of the Greek idea of medicine. It was based upon a false premise. They figured you had to have a balance in your body, and if you had too much of this and too much of that, the only way that you get straightened out is to bleed and get rid of the bad stuff. So they bled George Washington to death. He had pneumonia. They could have gone out some Cherokee medicine man and, 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 and got the right kind of medicine and saved that old boy's life, but they were still plagued with this false system of medicine. They had a false system also of creation. What was the Greek idea of creation and all reality? Go back there. And we're talking about Nero and Kalim. Evolution? What? Evolution? It evolved from chaos to order. And the gods had built everything exactly like they wanted it. And they were scared to death to change it. How have you ever heard of the city of uh, Corinth? There's an isthmus over there. Have you been over in there, those areas and see these big canals? And these, they were big canals that they would cut through solid rock and limestone and marble and everything. And they were shortcuts from one area to the other, from one sea to the other. And they were cutting these big things. All the high priest in the pagan temple <coughs> says, don't do anything like that The God's going to kill you. Because that dirt is God. And Julius Caesar had started building one of these canals and digging it all out. And there was an oracle put out that he was going to be killed because he had it was disturbing 
the God's playground. That he was moving the gods, displacing the gods that lived in that area. Nero had that problem. He had all oh, he spent hundreds of hundreds and thousands of dollars in sending Roman soldiers there to dig this out and he quit. <clears throat> he said, Shut it down because I'm gonna get in trouble. It was a false sense of the idea of deity. Again. We need to remember, this is God's earth. Whatever we do to it, we're dealing with God's stuff. You can never own it. Not one piece of gravel can you ever own. Did you know that? Not one grain of sand can you ever own. It's God's. It'll be here when you're gone. You can bet your bottom dollar on that one. <laughs> and you'll never lose. <laughs> All right. God created man, and He created him to be the ruler over the earth. The false system of teaching, false religion, has always kept mankind in darkness. God wants mankind to advance, but to advance and remember that He is God. How do you advance? How could you advance from Adam? Who here thinks they're smarter than Adam was when he, when God took him from this earth. It's impossible. We couldn't live long enough could we to know what he did. But how could we advance? Adam, in his garden, in his, by the way, it was called paradise. In that word, is, is, uh, goes all the way back to Hebrew and Chaldean and uh, Babylonian. It's an old Babylonian Persian word. It comes into English from Greek as power. It comes from in Greek as paradiso and in English as paradise. What does that term mean? What is that term? What does paradise mean? Pleasure. What? A garden. A guarded pleasure park. <laughs> Are you going to have pleasure in your life? Does God want you not to have pleasure? No, he wants you to have pleasure. Was, was Adam put in a paradise originally? And what was his job? Guard the guard. A work and guard that guard. What kind of a... Do you think that was a, a distasteful work? Pleasurable. It was pleasurable work. All right. It was a work of great pleasure. How many of you like being married? <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. You, you've got courage. <laughs> 27 years. Friday. How many of you like being married? You can raise your hand. <laughs> you don't have to raise your hand. My wife likes being married. I like being married too. Is it a job sometimes? Yes. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> but it is, a, it is a job of pleasure in the long run. Isn't it? <clears throat> Why? Because the body, the soul, desires union. Because in the garden you are separated and then you are put back together. That is a real, wonderful relationship. The Word of God says, Be not, be not unequally, unequally yoked. What's it talking about? Brother Lee, what's that mean? What's that mean? Be not unequally yoked. What do you do when you yoke something? You put them together to the work. The work. All right. What is the primary interpretation of that scripture? Be not unequally yoked. If you're too strong, locks in the door. You go on in circles all in all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be ye not unequally yoked. Well, first of all, you don't yoke a great big ox with a little bitty calf. They can't pull together, can they? It just doesn't work. It's going to be like this. You can't even plow a straight road. If you did that, you'd have to set the plow to where the big one was pulling all and the other one was just falling. Okay? 
be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. What's, it pri what's the primary interpretation of the scripture? Working. Don't go out and get a job with unbelievers. That's what Paul told them at that time. Why? Because they'll rub off on you. You're either a missionary or a mission field out there in the world, you know that? Even your children in school. If they're not a missionary, they're a mission field. Somebody's going to bring them to the devil if they don't bring them others to God. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's primary interpretation of that's working out of the world. I'm not telling you go quit all your jobs today because you have to work with unbelievers. But the customs and times were at that time in history is that they tried to, to, to work with, and that was part of the job. It was to work. They needed to work to make a living, and they needed to work among other believers. And secondarily, if you wanted to find a wife, don't go out there and find the wrong kind. Or if you want to find a husband, don't go out there and find the wrong kind and expect to, to convert them. Hmm. Well, if you went out and found your wife in a bar and, and you guys ended up fine or a husband in a bar and everything ended up fine, that would be the luck. It would be pure luck because that's not the place to do it. Is it? Not the place to do it. God gave man work to do. Cain's line and the line of sin has always refused to work. Did you know that? They wanted somebody else to do it for them. We had mass slavery in years. We had uh, terrible degradations of human life and everything down through history because of the refusal to want to stand on your own two feet and work. Down through history. And over in the Middle East, you know who does all that work over there among these Bedouin people? The women. They are nothing but slaves. That's why they have seven or eight wives. They have seven or eight slaves. Because them lazy old boys, all they want to sit there and dream and smoke dope. <laughs> and, uh, and, and dream about Allah and their next life. How far are we out there? They're still preaching. They're still preaching. Okay. When well, I was in the yeah. desert, I was at, in Qatar, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a little small state, none of their people did any, none of the uh, their yeah. citizens did any work. Nope. They always had uh, Indians or Pakistanis come in to do all their work. They did. Their trash picker-uppers were Pakistani. We all called them third, uh, third, co third country. Third world. Third world national. Well, well, it was third country because we were the second country. Mm -hmm. But, um, they got them to, to clean the toilets. They got everybody out. They didn't do any work themselves. That, that was really unpleasant. Yeah. Why? Because they, they don't better. Skitter yeah. away from the work of God. Just skitter away from them. God, I don't care if you're cleaning toilets or you're a janitor. If you're a good janitor, you need to have really a good time doing it. How many ever watched that movie, Go for Power, or whatever it was? Mm -hmm. that? that old boy that, uh, what was his name? He plays a lawyer and I've done all kinds of stuff on television in the movies. He got in the army. He was, yeah, bad luck. He got, in, he got in the army one time. This was when he was uh, uh, Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith. Yeah. And uh, he, they, the guy was going to really do something bad to him. He said, Tony would go in there and clean up the latrine, the toilets. And he went in there and made that thing shine, and he was so proud of it. And when he wanted her, he stepped on this thing, and all the toilet lids saluted the guy when he came in there. <laughs> he was proud of his job. That's the way we ought to be. Now, all the way through the history of mankind, have we got anything to be proud of? From Adam to here. What kind of a mess have we made out of God's world? Hmm? What kind of a mess have we made out of? Terrible. Have we done our job? Ever? What did, what did Adam do? He passed the baton, didn't he? 
was watching football. Who did he pass the baton back to? Yeah, he was out watching football. He was supposed to be watching his wife. <laughs> he wasn't doing his job, was he? And he let the snake come in, the Nahash, that deceiving serpent. Nahash, that's the Hebrew word. It doesn't sound good, does it? Nahash. The snake came in and deceived his wife. And he was someplace else. Do you think this, that the snake could ever deceive them if they'd been in the same place? Too strong. Could have done. Do you think the snake could have deceived Adam? He had not, had he? He had not. But he deceived something that was precious to Adam so that Adam would follow the path. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. So he would follow the path. How far are they along out there? Did that answer his question? Did that answer his question? Well, <laughs> now this, this whole story back there, what are the Bedouins doing over there? What did they always do in, the, in Palestine? Set back, let the women work, let the cattle graze, and did nothing with the land. I don't see that wrong, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and then when Israel came into the land in 1948, what did they start doing? They drained the swamps, they started clearing everything out, and has Israel ever been a farming people? Really? In no, history? No, no. No. Who prepared the land before they came into Canaan? The Canaanites. <laughs> which were no Ham's descendants. Yeah. And it was a curse that was upon them. They had prepared the land and set the farms all over. All you have to do is go in there and take it over. They didn't do it. Excuse me. I was yeah. going to say, uh, I'm telling you, there was an article about this said that people from Israel came to Kern Khan and showed them how to save the water, how to irrigate. Yeah, so, but that's what I mean, you know, they, they could have done that. Because, because I tell you what, you go over there. Have, have you been over there in the Middle East, brother? It is something else. With it, matter of fact, everything over here in America is run by pure greed and capitalism, not by efficiency at all. <laughs> it's how you make the biggest buck. That's all it is. And over there, they are surviving with very little. They have water desalinization plants and everything. All. This is not new technology. It's old technology. We could have done this stuff here for a hundred years. But we haven't do it. Yeah. Because it is not our help. lucrative. I well, refuse to accept our help because that's because the Quran says not to to have any dealings with us or the Jews. Yeah, but they that's that's, so that's, that's one. And over there, they don't want it far in that land. They don't want to, like I said, I saw those tractors just rusting in the fields because they did not want to have anything to do with it. All right, the, uh, brother, let me. I went to the Pyramid Lake, and there's a there's a water thing there. I've been working for about 27 years. He says there's only like one or two percent that water that goes to the home, so the rest goes to farming land. Yeah. So all water in Crane County or everywhere else is, it goes to uh, growing food. Other than that, like one or two percent goes into the housing and whatever. If we well, irrigate our fields, it'll look exactly like it does in the Middle East. Yeah, but the only thing about it, right down like in the Central Valley where we are today, they're taking all the water. They're taking all the water and cutting it into the big homes and stuff. And, and I mean, the river lakes and this lakes and that lakes and all over these silver lakes and silver creek and whatever, big things. But the farmers now here, you can't get it. L.A. Water and Power bought all the, all the water rights all the way up Owens Valley. Owens Valley was a great paradise at one time. But the money was down in L.A. And they're trying to buy up the water rights all down through here now and do the same thing here that they did in Owens the Valley. So because there's where the that. money is. It's more money. We have a right to take care of God's land like He would want us to take care of not what you can make the biggest buck for or anything else. And the, the world over there in the Middle East, there's a prime example of being willfully ignorant and just living in absolute depravity or else getting a slave to do it for you. Because they're not satisfied doing what God says in His Word. Uh, 
Do you have any prayer requests before I dismiss you? Any other prayer requests? Please remember me in your prayer, the, the medical things, and remember my daughter too, if she's been really sick. And uh, brother. This lady, a uh, uh, friend of mine, she, her uh, sister-in-law, her name is Elaine. They, she was about 42. She got cancer. She said uh, they only give her four years. Just pray for her. All right. Remember my aunt Mabel also, and please remember my family too. I'm trying to be with them and as to the Lord and pray for, for my family. Okay, I, I really would appreciate the prayers. I've been really dealing with, had opportunity to deal with more lately than I have in a long time. And uh, anything else, I'm going to have Brother Greg dismiss us in, in prayer. Anything else? Uh, Brother Greg, would you lead us in prayer? Please, Brother? Father, we thank you once again for this day and for the uh, lesson we've heard this morning. We just thank you, Lord, for Brother Jim and his knowledge of the knowledge you've given him of your word and uh, how he communicates it. We pray for his health, Lord, that you would uh, heal him of any affliction uh, that, that he may have. We also pray for his daughter that you would bless her and, and keep her healthy. And Lord, we pray for this one that Fernando mentioned. Elaine, who has cancer, and we know that she is probably very frightened by that. And uh, Father, we pray that you would comfort her. We pray that uh, if she doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that, that she would have a, an opportunity to uh, give her life to you and, and seek your, your comfort. And uh, well, we pray for uh, her treatment, Lord, that it would be, uh, that it would help her, Lord, that it would, uh, that she would be treated uh, by the, uh, with wisdom and uh, Father, the cancer can be cured. And we pray for uh, Jim's Aunt Mabel, that you would bless her and help her, Lord, and also Jim's family, that she would, uh, uh, those that don't know you yet as Lord and Savior, would have open hearts and open minds, that uh, they would uh, hear your word and receive it. Thank you for each one that's here. Thank you for uh, this place where we meet, uh, Valley Baptist Church, and we pray for our pastors and our leaders, and uh, Father, we pray that you uh, just continue to bless the church and uh, just help us to do our part. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If you go out here for still going, uh, kind of be quiet. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much uh, for your prayers so far. And I'll see you next Sunday. Thank <laughs> you.